Welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Lord. Let's kick off this segment. We're going to talk about all the trade rumors. The Braves did make a trade over the weekend, acquiring Nikki Lopez from the Royals for Taylor Hearn. So basically, they got Taylor Hearn last week. They optioned him back to Gwinnett. He had one bad start when we were there, on, or one bad outing when we were there on Saturday. They basically get Nikki Lopez for cash. Nikki Lopez. He brings one thing to the table. He can play all over the infield, and he plays el- really elite, elite defense. I mean, we're talking about a guy who is hitting 200 this year and has 1.1 WAR. That's how good he is <laughs> defensively. So, and he actually, I think he hit, I think he had about like a 105, 105 WRC plus in 2021, and had six WAR. So he was basically an average player in 2021 and had six WAR. So that's how good he is defensively. Um, I'm kind of surprised you were able to get him for so little, especially since you heard team like the Giants were interested. Like, what what were the Giants do sitting on their hands if you could get him for Taylor Hearn? So you could basically <laughs> they basically got him for free. But listen, he's not going to appear in the batter's box pro- probably once for the Braves. But as a defensive replacement, if someone goes down, it reminds me a lot of what the Braves got when they got Orlando Arcia. Orlando Arcia was kind of that super utility guy that could play a bunch of places. If someone gets injured, he is your backup guy. And hey, the Braves were able to tap into Orlando Arcia's offense. Maybe they could do something with Nicky Lopez, who, like I said, he he was an average hitter one year and he and he got six war. So he has multiple years of control, very similar type deal, but I don't expect him to see in the batter's box. But great defender if the Braves need a defensive replacement late in games. Yeah, you think he's under contract until 26? So yeah, three three more. What years. are the what are the Royals doing? I mean. I, I don't know. Taylor yeah, Hearn I mean, Taylor. Nothing. I don't know what they saw on Taylor Hearn, but <laughs> that's them. Okay. Uh, the big, the big rumor though that we got last night on Sunday night was that the Braves had checked in on Justin Verlander, which I thought was hilarious because there's no way that the Mets. First of all, Verlander has been much better of late, so they're going to be looking for some pretty good pieces if they do end up trading him. And I just can't see any world where Steve Cohen. I don't care that he would trade him to the Braves. Cause not only would Verlander be there this year when things don't matter, but he'd also be there next year. And I don't think the Mets are waving the white flag for next year too. I can't see any scenario, but I think it's, I wish I could have just been a fly on the wall for the conversation. Like, Hey Alex, what the hell do you want, man? Oh uh, yeah. I'm interested in, in Verlander. What do you think it'd take? Yeah. Your whole team, buddy. Like, <laughs> there's no way, there's no way that conversation went very far. So, and like uh, Morosi did also report that, um, they're, they're not actively engaged, but the fact that they even checked on is comical. And it does show you that Alex Anthopoulos, as we said, is leaving no stone unturned. It, and he also did say, Morosi did, that the Braves are looking for starting pitching. So yes, they, they, are, they are trying to find it. I don't know if they will before the deadline, but they are leaving no stone unturned. Another thing that I took away from this is that Liberty Media is basically giving the Braves whatever they need financially. Because this is a $43 million guy for the rest, whatever they owe him over the next two months of the $43 million plus $43 million next year. So they're, they're giving them the Braves a lot, a lot of room to wiggle at this trade deadline. If money is what it's going to take to improve this roster, I think Alex Anthopoulos has the go ahead. It's really about whether he can find the right deal in terms of prospects to where it's worth it for the Braves. Yeah, I think that's six. That's probably just around sixty million dollars over the course of Verlander's uh, two-year deal. Um, Alex Anthopoulos came out and said it that I think maybe a week or two ago, where he said, "You know, we have all of the uh, facilities needed to do anything at the trade deadline." And you suggested that meant, you know, finance. It, it wasn't prospects because we all know we can see the, the Braves farms, and it's not that. It was the money thing. The Braves acquired Rossiel Iglesias last year's deadline, and the reason why they were being able to get it for virtually nothing, Tucker Davison and uh, Jesse Chavez, who Jesse Chavez is back on the Braves, and they just DFA'd uh, Tucker Davidson, was because the Braves were inheriting the rest of his contract. I don't remember how much. I think it was like $56 million at the time last year. Uh, and it looks like the Braves are willing to do it again. And that helps out in trades because – now you don't have to give up as much. If you can inherit that contract money, you don't have to give up as much uh, prospect capital. Uh, yeah, this whole thing is just hilarious. Uh, they would be fools to trade Justin Verlander, not because of this year, but because of next year. Starting pitching already, getting rid of uh, Max Scherzer is going to be a question mark for the Mets. If they do this, it will be it will be hell. I mean, there's no way they should move Verlander unless it's just for a haul of prospects that, you know, their depleted farm system really does need. Yeah, I think there's a big difference between Scherzer and Verlander. If you go yeah. look at Scherzer, yeah. like he, he's definitely starting to hit that cliff where he falls off. 
uh, his, his velocity on all his pitches are going down. That's where they were willing to eat, you know, what was it? 25, $30 million of his contract for this year and next year, just so they could get a decent prospect in Acuna, which I don't have to say, I'm not exactly happy that another Acuna, because you know, Acuna's contract does come up eventually and playing with his brother, you never know. Like that would be hell, personal hell to me if we had to play, to play two Acunas, but Hey, that's five years away. We're not going to talk about that. And I'm sure that might've been in the back of the Mets minds when they were making a deal like this, but desperation move right there. If, if, if that was even in their mind, that's crazy. I mean, Acuna, Acuna is also a very good prospect. He's going to be a very good player. I think a lot of people are comparing him to kind of an Ozzy Albies type. He has a lot of power, a lot of speed can play in the middle infield. But uh, I also saw some Mets fans comically saying, Oh, he's, he's the better Acuna. And then someone <laughs> quote tweeted it and said, Hey, when, when uh, Ronald was Luis and Angel's age, he was hitting 41 homers and stealing 37 bags in the majors, not, not in, <laughs> not in double a baseball, yeah. but I do think he's going to be a very good prospect. I think that's a good haul for a pitcher like Scherzer, who I think is definitely on the end Verlander. He's looked really, really good of late. And I don't think you give him up unless you're getting a lot in return. So the Braves didn't make a lot of sense. Another interesting rumor we got was that the giants were interested in Vaughn Grissom. Coincidentally, they were also interested in Nicky Lopez who the Braves then acquired so uh, I don't think that Nicky Lopez is going anywhere, but Vaughn Grissom makes some sense for them. He's a huge upgrade offensively to what they have playing at second base. And the thing is, though, the Giants are a competing team. Like, what are they going to give the Braves? And I'm not giving Vaughn Grissom, who's been tearing the cover off the ball in AAA and is only 22 years old. I believe for 22-year-olds in AAA, he has the highest WRC plus by a good margin. So saying this guy doesn't have value or acting like he doesn't have value – we don't know where he fits in the Braves' long-term plans, but you're not giving him away for nothing. If you have to trade him, you can trade him in the offseason. You can trade him next trade deadline, whatever. But don't give him away for nothing, and I just don't see a lot of – I mean, the, the Giants do have pitching depth, but will they give up one of their better pitchers while they're going in a playoff race? I have a hard time believing that comes to fruition over the next, what, 36 hours? Yeah, I uh, we said it, I think, on Thursday or Wednesday of last week. If you missed that, go check it out. It's probably on the YouTube Sports Talk ATL. Uh, we are in agreement. There really is no place for Von Grisham in Atlanta. Unless he somehow you know turns around his defense at shortstop, there's really no place for him. He doesn't have the power for left field. Can't be a DH, no power. So, obviously, the next thought would be to move him. But like I said, and you agreed – we can't just move him to move him. You know, we can't just move or move him for some average deal because he is still valuable. He can play second base in the majors and his bat does play in the majors. He's going to be a hell of a player in the major leagues. It's just a matter of when he gets the opportunity in Atlanta. He's not going to get it. We already, we've, t we've spoken ad nauseum about this, but, I would be sick to my stomach if we gave him away for, you know, pennies on the dollar, which I do not see. Alex Anthopoulos is all about value, value, value. There's just there's just no way that we're just going to give him up for the sake of giving him up a back of the rotation arm like a fifth starter. I would be sick to my stomach if we did that. Yeah, it's, I, not I, yeah, it's not I, happening. It's not happening. It's not happening. Well, one... I will say one thing I just wanted to say. The Nicky Lopez, you know, he's three years of team control. That makes this very interesting. You know, it makes it makes Von Grissom even more expendable because Von Grissom was basically a glorified backup in AAA. Charlie Culberson may have come in in the immediate to replace Orlando Arcia or Ozzy Albies. But if we're talking like a long term basis of one of those two guys got hurt, uh, maybe not shortstop. But Von Grissom was coming up to replace Ozzy Albies if he went if he went down yeah. with a significant injury. So cool. Nicky Lopez kind of gives you that and kind of even makes Von Grissom even more expendable. Yeah, I don't disagree. I think really the team leading up to the trade deadline that I'm going to be watching is the Padres. They they swept the Rangers this weekend, and that now making people think that they're going to they're going to you know go for it. They're still five games back in the wild card. If they lose tomorrow, or if they lose today, like I wonder if that changes things. I still think Josh Hader and Blake Snell are two guys to watch. They're going to be kind of midnight hour deals. I think if they get traded. And I think those are two guys that everyone's going to have interest, especially the Braves. They could they could go get a starter in Blake Snell, or they could get that dominant bullpen arm. So that's the team that I'm going to be watching leading up to the trade deadline. If they decide to hang on to their pieces, I just don't think there's a lot of sellers. I think the Braves are happy with where they are. Look, not a lot of teams in the National League are making moves either. So the Braves aren't the only ones. Coming up after the break, Calvin Ridley looks fantastic with the Jaguars, which is a good news for the Falcons.